I'm sure you guys studied that before. You know that it goes by 45, 90, right? 135, right? And 180, 225, and so forth, all the way to 360. It's very helpful when it, when it comes to understanding that, or else your objects won't be aligned properly. Another thing to do is if you do not want to write in values, you could also manually, or sorry, yeah, you can manually change this pretty quickly by just doing a couple, just just by holding a couple of keys. And to do that, you just uh, hold uh, the uh, the control key, uh, and then just left click and then turn it. Be very careful because if you you can only drag this left and right. If you drag it up, notice how it starts to flip. And let's just say let's just say we flipped it wrong. We're like, oh no. How do we actually put this back to its normal position? There is actually an undo key in Browdit. To do this, just click U. And there you go, back to normal. So it's very helpful with using undo, key, undo keys for cleaning up a mess that you made. And also, if you really want to, instead of, say, clicking this and spawning an object, clicking this and then spawning an object, which takes time, you could easily copy and paste an object so quickly. Just select an object, object click C, and there you go. Paste it just by left clicking and you just copied yourself an object. And it's very easy. Okay? And if you want to say align an object properly with another one, just hold shift so it aligns it to the grid, right? And then let's just say we want to make sure that this is facing the the direct the right direction. You just gotta get used to uh which way this is actually facing. So in this case it's two seventy. And after you got the right angle, hold shift and then drag it so it snaps this up to the grid and you will see that it actually pretty much perfectly aligns itself with the other object which is really great to know and if you want to move an object just slightly up or down just use the arrow keys right arrow keys can move an object just slightly so if you want to say just get this piece perfectly aligned move it once or twice right or you can just drag it itself you can also drag objects and you can zoom at the same time so if I want to I could just get it as close as possible just like that. It's mm, well, almost there, not not too bad, but you'll understand what I mean. Yeah, so uh, you can also do that. And then uh, if you wanted to, say, raise an object on a hill or even in the air, just select an object and click page up. So if you hold page, if you click page up many times, you'll see it starts raising itself off the ground. But let's just say it's, oh, it's going too slow, right? If you want to increase the speed of its raising, hold shift and then hold page up and you'll see it moves a lot faster. See that difference? Holding the shift, no shift. See that difference? And if you want to undo it, undo actually takes a while because it's, it's recording every single motion you did with the keys, so you, you're going to have to wait for this to work. But let's just say if you want this to get to the ground really quickly, just move it and watch it snap to the ground just like that. So it's very easy. So you know a little bit about objects and how to move them and raise them and lower them. Lowering is page down, just, just to let you know. Page down is lowering, page up is moving them up. You know how to change their angles and you know how to paste objects. I recommend you paste all the objects you need for a map by browsing through this. So if I say, if I, if I looked at this and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to use that for my map. Just paste it on the outside of your map so you know what you're going to use. Let's say I want to use that. I always do this right before I actually design a map so I have everything ready because taking the time to search and find the right objects during your mapping and designing takes time and you could lose track of what you're about to make because you're searching for objects. So just have that ready. It's really helpful to know. Lastly, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the lighting. Okay, so after your objects are done, and we go to light edit. So light edit is the most difficult edit mode when it comes to mapping because there's so many different forms of lights and the composition of lights on objects and the terrain. You want the right color. You want the right intensity. You just want everything to look really nice. And that's what the, pro that's what the problem is with it. But there are ways to, uh, to get the right composition of lights and that is practice, right? So let's start off with something simple. If you want to take a look, make sure you're selected in light edit mode by going to edit, light edit. Make sure you can see the light. So to sh show the light, click L. You notice that everything just show, just like pretty much turned yellow, right? That's that's when you show lights. As you can see, there's no lights on this map. Well, you may be. Well, you may. Okay, this is the thing. If you see a white ground, you know that there are lights. However, this is kind of fooling you. Make sure you click Generate, Calculate Light Maps, and that's what you're actually seeing in game. So everything will be black. This is this is with no lights on with lights on. So everything you'll see in game is black. 
don't worry about the sprite. This guy is not actually compiled on a map, so if you were to play this map in game, you will not see him, so don't worry. So let's just say we want to make this, make this map bright up. Say a sunlight, for example. This is what we got to do. First, hold control, left click, and you'll see a light bulb spawn. This little light bulb can be raised and lowered by doing the following. Hold control, it's a little bit different, hold left click, and then just drag back, and you'll see it start to move up and down. If it doesn't move, just try to keep moving around, and then there you go. Now it starts to move up and down. Just try to move it, get a little feel with it. If you are working with sunlight, make sure you raise this guy really high in the air, to this high, and then click enter to view the property, uh, the property window. So now that we're in the window, you'll see the intensity, the range. The range is what we got to work with first. So as you can see, this big bubble is not really covering the ground. So let's change this to, say, 20,000. Now as you can see, if we zoom out, you'll see, well, I guess you don't see it, but it's pretty much, it's, it's definitely covering the entire map. So the entire map is now covered by this light. Okay? And also, I recommend that uh, you use the light value 127 when it comes to the sunlight. And then you can change this value to 0 0.01. Leave this blank. Okay? We're just going to start off something basic, so nothing too complicated. So now that we have our lights, let's try that. Calculate light maps. And there we go. This is what we see. Right? This is, this is how bright the map will be when it comes to the lights. However, do not be fooled thinking that the light is too weak and you need to increase the light effect. I'll, I'll give you a little introduction to this, but this is more into the uh, intermediate to expert range, but I'll show you this now. Uh, you see this color? This is what shows you the diffusion of color in a map. So if, uh, if you were to open another gravity map and you, look, you click Windows, Global Lighting, you'll see this, all these values are changed, right? You can alter this to make things more brighter and stuff like that, but uh, don't worry about that right now. You can change this. Let's change these values. Uh, change to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and click OK. Now you see some, a couple. Of, if you click Generate, calculate light maps. There should be a slight difference in this. Doesn't look too much like it, but anyways, you know what? Let's just do this for now. I don't want to get too much complications, so let's just increase this to 192. Don't go any higher than 192. 192 is more than enough. So if you click calculate light maps, everything should be brightened up now. So that's really good. And watch this. If we go to, uh, where's our opt uh, did my objects go somewhere? Oh, okay, sorry. If we go to object edit, right, and we made an object in a map just like this, and it's kind of tiny. Let's make this bigger. Let's make it twice the size, just like that. And we were to say, make some sunlight. We want some reflections off this thing. We want things to look more lifelike. So go back to light edit mode. Click O to show objects. Then I want you to make another light. So we have two lights now. We have the sunlight, which is up here, right? And then we have the shadow. This is what we're going to call the shadow. So let's change this to shadow. Click enter so everything's assigned. Uh, change this value to about. 127 should be fine. And then make this 2000. Then I want you to change this to 0 0.01. Click enter. Make sure you click enter after everything is typed in, just like that. Then I want you to, to select the checkbox that says cast shadows. Then click OK. Raise this up like I showed you. OK. And then after that, go to generate, calculate light maps. And then look at this. We have some shadows. So we actually have a little shadow off this object, looks like a little tiny tower it seems, but click L to view or not to view light maps. And that's how we do a little bit of light uh, map editing. And then if you were to make some walkable uh, levels, walkable areas for players, go to edit mode, get edit, and you'll see that everything has now gone extremely laggy. Why is this? Well, get edit is pretty much the most laggiest mode when it comes to editing. So what I usually do is I zoom in really, really big, like as, well, as close as you can, and then press the plus key to expand the width, or the yeah, the width of this, so you get you can select more areas. Use the bracket and the uh, yes, use the bracket keys to scroll through this stuff. And if you want to make a walkable, just select walkable. Even a tiny piece should should be fine. Okay. Uh huh. And, uh, what it seems or I expand a couple area too much, so if you are, make sure that your radius gas are being placed is small, 
or relatively small. But what I was going to show you is that I increase it to such a size that when you just entire map, just some click. So just bracket keys in area first, bracket sorry, sorry, and then paste it so that your whole map is now not walkable. And just do the walkable areas at the end. So you actually uh, do walkable and walkable at the same time. You'll do the walkable areas, which is where the players are going to go. So after that, save your map. After that, done. And uh, and so uh, if your map is if your map is saved, which is great, and you want to reopen it, just click File Open, go back to the location you saved it, which was your desktop. If you did do it on your desktop, and then double click it, and you know what? It should open up perfectly fine. And in this case, as you can see, that I kind of crashed because of the gas were too expanded. I'll show you what I did. I did something like this. I hope it doesn't crash again, but. What I was trying to show you is that if you want to, the first thing what I usually do whenever I start a map is I make sure everything is not walkable. So I just expand it using plus, 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 as you can see the radius is increasing, zoom out, plus, 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 one more time, and then click and watch. Everything is now not walkable. And then I would, at the end I would say, you know what, I'll have players walk through here. So I just select the walkable area and there's just, just kind of coloring in a sense around the areas where you want players to go. If you don't want them to go on a hill, then keep this red. If you want them to go around a hill, just color around it, just like that. Okay, so now that you know how to make a basic map with all that, all those steps and edit modes, I hope you can start off with your first map and your first creation. And then later on in my next tutorial, I'll talk about uh, some more intermediate stuff and some more new edit modes, such as making hills and sloping and effects hopefully we get we'll get into effects and uh more advanced lighting and stuff like that so have fun with that and i'll see you soon